Let's see how it works. Uh, we start our experimentation. Now, what you see here is a picture of a climate classification. Why are we talking about this? Because so far I, thought, I talked about uh, rainfall. Actually, water resources uh, is uh, also conditioned by evaporation. Water resources availability. So rainfall is the main driver. But if there is a lot of evaporation, or what is called evapotranspiration, which means evaporation from liquid storage and transpiration, so evaporation plus transpiration from plants, from living organisms, this evapotranspiration is the part of rainfall that we cannot, or let's say, is the part of rainfall that goes back to the atmosphere directly without passing from the oceans. I was saying that I was saying that evapotranspiration is the part of rainfall that we cannot use, but this is not correct because uh, water for irrigation then it's converted to evapotranspiration, but we used it. Anyway, this classification of climate based on uh, what is rainfall and what is uh, the potential of uh, evaporation? Keep in mind that uh, actually this classification, which is uh, called the Köppen climate classification, I would say that it's the most used climate classification worldwide, is actually based on rainfall and temperature, not evapotranspiration. Because Temperature is easier to measure, and there is an implicit assumption that uh, temperature is strictly related to evapotranspiration. So this classification tells you where water resources are actually available, and uh, basically the problem here is to understand uh, these uh, symbols. Basically they classify the climate in four classes, A, B, C, five, A, D, C, D, and E, and then subclasses, uh, which are the subsequent letters. So you see that here they start with A, and then B, C, C, D, D, E. In my pages, there is the explanation also for the second and third classifier classifiers. You don't need to learn them, okay? But everything is. Uh, Written there if you want to understand. This picture basically says that when you see blue, you have plenty of water resources available, based on climate classification. When it's red, you don't have much water. When it's green, it's fine. It's just fine. Okay? So you see that uh, Italy is green in the north, blue in the Alps, uh, is yellow in the south, and uh, also you see what we know in Europe, the east of Europe is, uh, is fine and uh, the, of course Africa, the north of Africa is, is uh, arid, like Australia and this is based on just climate classification as I said. And this is uh, a picture of distribution of water resources. Uh, this is a sequence of pictures uh, that I'm not spending much time on and uh, I suggest you to have a look, but there is nothing that you have to learn here. And uh, also, it is directly connected to the distribution of rainfall and climate classification. So this is the global distribution of water resources and the other pictures. Uh, and uh, it's specified here renewable water resources, uh, which is uh, something uh, more oriented to sustainability with respect to just saying water resources. Renewable means that it's replaced. Because uh, it is excluded the ground, deep groundwater availability from this classification. Basically, it is based on, uh, on the surface water, river flows. It's mainly based on that. And this is in, instead uh, the global distribution of the proportion of percentage of renewable water resources that is withdrawn. And uh, you see that uh, what you would expect, uh, meaning that uh, in the north of Africa you have uh, few water resources, so the percentage that is withdrawn is almost close to 100%. But the same in Europe, where 
not nearly the same. It's a little bit lower, but in Europe we have more water resources, but still we are withdrawing a lot. It means that where you see that it's uh, red and brown, it means that we are already exploiting, using a lot of the available water resources. This is also interesting because you can see where, where are the countries where there is more water scarcity. And let's distinguish between water scarcity and drought. Water scarcity is permanent, drought is temporary. Okay, let's keep it in mind. Water scarcity is permanent, drought is temporary. So if you are in a situation of water scarcity and then you get a drought, it's a double, the, the, let's say, a double problem. This is uh, global distribution of water withdrawn per inhabitant. Okay, so it's uh, expressed uh, in terms of per capita. And everything is also in my web pages. And this is the global distribution of proportion of total water withdrawal for agriculture. And you can see here where water for food is mainly used. If you compare the pictures, you will see that uh, where there is a lot of uh, consumption for agriculture, there is also a high percentage of withdrawal because agriculture, as I said, and this is something that you have to keep into account, is 70% of water consumption globally and also in Italy at the national scale, at our national scale. So if we take into account the total of uh, water that we use, 70% is for agriculture. Okay, and the other 30% is uh, more or less equally split between industrial use and civil use. It depends, I say equally split, but of course in some regions of Italy there is more civil use, in other regions there is more industrial use. Okay, here, this picture is just an example to show that seasonality is extremely important, as I told you. And this picture is not related to water resources management. It's a study, I was a co-author, and uh, we used several catchments in Europe. And uh, in order to classify the catchments from an hydrologic point of view, we provided these diagrams, which is uh, uh, the runoff, the amount of runoff, so where the bars are higher, we have more water, but monthly enough, because this gives also an idea of seasonality. And uh, of course you understand that where the regime is more regular, like in the Alps, it's uh, much uh, easier to regulate water resources management, to manage water resources. Uh, it's easier because you don't have a strong variability. In the Alps, you don't have a strong variability because during summer there is the contribution of the snow melt. And, and during winter there is the contribution of rainfall. So if the river is not really uh, um, an alpine river, but it's a mix. Alpine river means that the main contribution is from glacier. The alpine river typically is dry during winter, so it has variability and it has the peak in the summer. But if it is a mix between an alpine river and uh, um, a river where rainfall falls significantly, it's clear that during the winter you have rainfall contributing to the river flow, so you have a good river flow. During summer there is snow melt, so the regime is quite regular. So I guess that this river here is a mix between, uh, with, it's a river with an alpine contribution and uh, a rain dominated contribution. And uh, so seasonality is extremely important, this is just an example. I think I can stop here and we will start next time with uh, increasing water supply and etc. This is already a solution. Uh, a couple of communication. First, uh, on uh, next week, Tuesday, be prepared to bring the PC here. We will work on the PC. Second communication. Uh, do you have any news about the change in timing of uh, regarding uh, your lectures? Uh, no. So they cannot anticipate. Yeah. yeah she, she drives to the restaurant at 11.30. She will make an attempt to close at 11.30. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really difficult. Okay. Okay, I'll tell you on Monday because uh, they have uh, you know, a rough and it could be 
mitigated if we started at 11.30 instead of starting at 11.15. It means that we need to stop at 1 p.m. instead of 12.45. And I'll tell you on Monday, if, if, you, if you are willing to do that, maybe that for them it's easier. Because otherwise they miss... Uh, yeah. On Monday. And what is the timing of this? Uh, from 9 to 12. To 12. But this is difficult to solve because we are from 9 to 11. And uh, this is going to last until June? Or? It's 9. Mm. This is difficult. So yesterday you didn't attend the lectures? No, because I was there. Yeah, you were there. Okay, I see the point. And it is a bit of a problem to solve because uh, if we try to move in the schedule, we cause uh, we induce other overlaps. So it, it's, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't think I have a solution for that. And at least I can say that you have the videos and the web pages where you can, we can get everything. Sorry for that. Yeah. Uh, usually, in the past, I yeah, I want to create a distribution list. In the past, I used uh, I used uh, just the, the simple collection of emails uh, and uh, to be shared with you. But I guess that now there is uh, indeed the opportunity to create distribution lists. Uh, you confirm to me, yeah. okay? And uh, can you please tell me uh, how my colleagues did in doing that? Uh, did they use uh, what? Uh, uh, Almazan? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Alocampus. Okay. Okay, and you are automatically subscribed to Alocampus? It is the DSA that DSA? Yes. And is it required a password to log in? 